In a recent column, I discussed staffing shortages in the RCMP and how that is affecting frontline policing in our communities. But frontline policing is not the only problem. The RCMP since its inception in 1873 has tried to be all things to all people. It provides contract frontline policing in eight provinces and three territories. But more than that, it is also responsible for national security, uh, investigating organized crime, drug enforcement, money laundering, and criminal intelligence. The staffing shortages are affecting uh, all of those sections of the national police force. It's a significant problem. In 2015, the Charbonneau Commission in Quebec found there was a significant link between organized crime, politicians, and the letting of public contracts. And then just last year, uh, retired RCMP Deputy Commissioner Peter German tabled a report on money laundering in BC where he identified uh, a significant amount of money was going through the casinos and then in a subsequent report uh, going through real estate. The problem seems to be in the billions of dollars. And yet, his report also identified there was nobody in the RCMP who was investigating uh, money laundering. Uh, truth be told, uh, there's also no one in BC that I can uh, tell is investigating Asian organized crime. It seems they only have a few folks that are involved in, in intel gathering on Asian organized crime, and that's about it. Um, th th there's a problem. The CFSEU, which is the section responsible for investigating organized crime, seems to be focused uh, entirely on outlaw motorcycle gangs and street gangs. And that's all the resources they have. The staffing shortages are, are hurting them as well. In, in my opinion, the RCMP needs a fundamental rethink. This is the 21st century with 21st century problems. Uh, this is brought on by the internet and digital, uh, digital technology and things like Bitcoin and how uh, organized crime groups can, can send money around the world. And yet in Canada, we have no wire transfer laws or, or, or mail fraud laws like they do in the United States. We need to, to rethink how we are approaching things like national security and organized crime. The RCMP as an organization is resistant to change. I have a long <laughs> referred to as 144 years of tradition unhampered by progress. Well, that's tongue in cheek, but there's a lot of truth in that statement. It is my opinion that the RCMP needs to get out of contract policing and focus on its federal responsibilities. It also needs to build subject matter experts in those fields. Currently, members transfer in and out of federal sections and detachments uh, for promotions and career enhancement uh, and the like. And there's also part of a problem uh, that they don't have subject matter experts because of these transfers. If somebody is, is in an Asian organized crime section, as an example, or in a money laundering section, because of the, the technicalities involved in those things, once they develop expertise, they should be they should be developed as individuals and then and then made uh, subject matter experts, not transferred to uniform policing in somewhere in northern Alberta. In my view, it's way past time to look at how our national police force functions, and the government really needs to take a lead role in this. Uh, they need to define how policing services should be delivered to Canadians. After all, it is their primary responsibility is the protection of the public. For True North, I'm Leo Knight.